Gear Friday. I think you were awesome. Don't ever change. Love, Carl. That's how I'd like to start the day. Welcome to CNN 10. Got some really interesting info coming up. We begin by explaining some international responses to a spreading disease. The Wuhan coronavirus started in the Chinese city of Wuhan in the eastern central part of the country. But now it's spread all over China and all across the world. More than 100 cases have been confirmed in 20 other countries, from Asia to North America to Europe, the Middle East, and Oceania. Mainland China has counted more than 8,100 cases so far. There have been 171 deaths from the Wuhan coronavirus there, which represents a little over 2% of everyone who's caught it. The fear of this virus has welled up worldwide. Russia has shut down its borders with China. Several airlines, including American, United, Lufthansa, and British Airways, have stopped flying to and from parts of China. And in Italy, 7,000 people were held aboard a cruise ship yesterday afternoon because a 54-year-old woman from Hong Kong had come down with a fever. She and her husband were eventually found not to have the Wuhan coronavirus, but officials wanted to get the results before letting people off the boat. A CNN correspondent in Hong Kong, where 10 cases have been confirmed, says parts of the city are like a ghost town. Instead of having large celebrations for Chinese New Year, people there are having to wait in three-hour lines to buy surgical face masks, which they believe will help keep them from catching the virus. The World Health Organization met again yesterday and decided to declare the novel coronavirus a public health emergency of international concern. That declaration triggers a more organized effort to respond to the virus internationally. A normally traffic jammed highway in the city of Wuhan, China, near empty, only a few passing vehicles. Public transportation shut down. City buses sit untouched. Only a few residents spotted outside. Eerie for a city 11 million people call home. Major food chains closing to customers, from Starbucks to KFC to McDonald's lights off inside. This Walmart open and crowded, shoppers wearing face masks inside and quickly buying up what's left, leaving bare produce stands behind. Outside the lockdown zone, similar scenes across mainland China. There's 24 million people in Shanghai and I'm walking in the middle of the street. American college student Jenna Davidson arrived in Shanghai a few weeks ago for the spring semester. You know, we got here before the outbreak and it went south really quick. She says finding food in the massive city has gotten increasingly difficult. They shut down our campus. Um, we almost felt as though they didn't realize that we we're still living on it mm. because um, we didn't even have like hot water for a few days and um, the cafeterias on campus are closed. So we started realizing, well, <laughs> we need food um, and most stores within walking distance have been shut down or it's like zombie land and there everyone's fighting for what's left on the shelves. Jenna initially tried to keep positive. This is the guy who takes my temperature nine times a day. She even sent this photo to her dad, trying to reassure him. For a while I wasn't telling my dad everything, um, but he was finding out on the news just how bad it was. So um, yeah. it's, been, it's been hard on him. She and her fellow classmates now booked on flights to get out. Destination, anywhere but here. 10 second trivia. What is one thing that all poikilotherms have in common? Are they all fish, four-legged, cold-blooded, or endothermic? Poikilotherms have variable body temperatures. They're considered cold-blooded. So with our relatively high, unchanging body temperatures, you and I are considered warm-blooded. Most of us anyway. But how warm? Since a German doctor took the temperatures of 25,000 patients in the mid-1800s, it's been accepted that normal human body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. But now, a few studies are indicating that's no longer true. The most recent one, published by Stanford University, found that our bodies actually average a temperature of 97.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Researchers looked at Americans' records dating back to the U.S. Civil War, and they didn't find that the old average was wrong. They found that our bodies are somehow cooling down with each new generation. Scientists aren't sure exactly why. Some think it's because we spend more time in heat and air conditioning than our ancestors did, and they don't know if this means anything good or bad related to our health. 
but it is possible that the old 98.6 degree benchmark is now more than a whole degree too high. Third party cookie might sound like one too many, but as far as the internet goes, Google is getting rid of them from its Chrome browser. Cookies are controversial. They can remember what's in your online shopping cart, what your login name and password are, what your address is for auto-filling out forms. But critics are concerned they could be an invasion of privacy. Users don't always give permission for their info to be stored, and some don't want records made of the things they've written or the sites they've visited online. If you've ever logged onto a browser, you've gotten a cookie. It's a technology that's been around basically as long as the internet. And I'm not talking about the edible kind. It's fueled the rise of the online global ad business. Shares of Facebook jumping in the after hours up as much as 4% at one point. But all that could change soon. When you go to a website, it can store information about your visit on your computer. That's a cookie. It contains a unique ID that the website can later use to identify you. So that's how a site remembers your language preferences, that you've logged on to something, that you've put something in your cart. That's a first party cookie, and those aren't going anywhere. Like real cookies, internet cookies come in different flavors. Enter third party cookies. They come from sites you haven't visited directly, and they're the ones that are going away. Third party cookies are far and away the most popular, the most widespread tracking technology on the web. And they make it really easy for trackers to build up big invasive profiles of users without their knowledge. They work like this. An ad on a site will give you a cookie. Then if you go to a different site that uses the same ad server, it can match that third party cookie and learn more about you. As you visit more websites and more websites, the information associated with that cookie grows. So ad networks can build profiles of people and serve more targeted and more relevant ads based on those cookies. So when you put an item in a shopping cart on Amazon, but don't buy it, and then later see banner ads from the same product on a totally different site, that's a third party cookie. That cookie driven ad model has enabled sites like Facebook and Google and CNN.com to serve more effective and relevant ads and then offer their products for free. It's formed the backbone for the online ad business, a business that is now worth hundreds of billions of dollars. But now that business has to change. Safari and Firefox have already banned third party cookies and now Google has announced it will phase them out of Chrome over a two year period. And even though Google is not being as strict as Apple and Mozilla in its ban, its actions actually matter the most. That's because Chrome controls more than 60% of the browser market. When Google moves, it matters. I love time-lapse video. You could show me a time-lapse of a chicken in a yard. I'd find it fascinating. But how much more fascinating is this video of the Northern Lights? Finnish stargazers recently noticed a unique shape to this aurora, what makes it look like a dune. University of Helsinki scientists think it's caused by waves of oxygen atoms in the upper atmosphere. They hope it'll help us learn more about that atmosphere. Assuming they can all get on the same wavelength without anyone aurora rising up with a bad latitude. Guess it depends on how charged things get and which way the solar wind blows. At least it's magneto to look at and easy to see why scientists get eye on a site that has played its particle and precipitated aurora awesome displays for hydro generations, y'all. I'm Carl Azus. Last stop today is in the Palmetto State where the warriors of Indian Land Middle School are watching there in Indian Land, South Carolina. Hope to see more subscriptions and comments at youtube.com slash CNN.